by design of standoffs and that's what these are um, what I do is I run a end mill around the inside of there 12 millimeter down this is 12 millimeter plate don't forget um, because the I make these slightly bigger than what the hole is in here because the hole isn't actually square yeah you have to make it square <laughs> Um, and I, I make a ledge there, there's a bit of a one to a half millimeter ledge all the way around there. Uh, but I still make it so this is a fairly tight fit in here. Okay, it'll sort of nearly go in. So it is necessary to now use a leather or a rubber hammer or a block of wood on here. I like a nice tight fit, um, which this is, and slightly proud, about half a millimetre proud, which is what I also like. Um, so now what I'm going to do is four set screws, countersunk set screws around the outside. Uh, however, uh, I didn't actually think of this at the time of doing the, the drawing, but um, I can't put them dead on centre here because I'm going to run into that, that hole there, so I'm going to have to go slightly off to one side. Um, I don't think it'll look that odd. I think it, you know, it's going to be effective anyway. So um, just be careful, uh, if you do put an oil groove in, just be careful you, you don't put it next this all grew so actually I'll go this side and I, I just have to put a, 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 a nick in here or I could put a drill in in here and thread it and put a grub screw uh, for the oil way I haven't made my mind up what I'm going to do about that yet and the reason I'm putting an oil way in is because I use um, a, a brass thrust bearing in here. I mean you can you can buy thrust bearings, races and this that and the other but I like to do stuff myself <laughs> and uh, you know it's an old-fashioned way 50, 60, 70 years ago that's how it was done you did you use either phosphor bronze or brass thrust washer and um, it worked then so you know if I can make something I will I'm doing now is I'm actually countersinking with a five millimeter drill and I'm just drilling a hole just through the outer casing part and then the thread will be down in through here so uh, you know these will drop in there like so through you know it's got a five millimeter hole there so these will go through just and then the threaded part is in here. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. And I'll just zoom you in for a bit of a better look here. And this is just a simple jig. Now anything you make to hold something or to assist you to do a better job, it's called a jig. And this really is, you know, this is the fence here this is just a piece of wood uh, put up against the fence to fetch uh, to fetch the material out from the fence so the chuck doesn't uh, you know, go into the top of the fence or anything like that and um, it's also a measured distance 
um, you know, sort of holds this into a measured distance uh, underneath the, the drill. And you've just got two stop blocks here, which are snugly fit in, uh, which just holds this. I mean, this is, this is good as a vice. And it presents the material to the drill in exactly the same position every time. So you can see that I've actually drilled the holes off center from the main attachment uh, holes there. And it's, I've done the same for both sides, although this side doesn't really need it. Uh, I've done it anyway because the attachment holes for the stepper motor in the corners. So, but that doesn't really matter. Okay, now I've got this in place, pretty well exactly where I want it. It's exactly lined up with this, but what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm putting M6 bolts in here. Um, so I've got a 5mm drill, actually a 4.9mm drill, which I'm going to drill into the cast iron and just mark these holes. Um, and I've, at the other end of the lathe, I've got to uh, clamp to the bench a, a block of wood so it doesn't slide off the bench. But I'm going to put quite a bit of pressure on this to get into it, I think. So here we go. It's because it's gone all the way through. That's gone through about uh, 10 millimeter thereabouts of cast iron. It hasn't moved. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill these out uh, an additional extra size. I'm probably going to go to 7mm, which will allow me some movement here to, to line up perfectly. Actually, 6.5mm will be fine, I think. One. So what I'm going to do now is stick a drill in here. To hold it while I move the clamp. That one. So what I'm going to have to do is drill and tap these first, and uh, screw them on. They drill that one out. That's okay. No need to do it up too tight at the moment. And this isn't the final fitting here. Let's do them up firm. Final fitting will be after the bearing's been put in and we're lining the shaft up with it. And we're bringing the shaft in and then we can tighten all these up. So that's basically on there. Next job. Oh, a minute. And that fits on there like that. Ah, so I'm going to have to take a little bit off of these. It's not quite, it's going to be very close, but uh, it's not quite fitting in there. So I'm just going to take a little bit off these. 
Just a nick off them. I knew it was going to be close. So now the moment of truth. I've set the, I think they call it Gibbs, uh, up in here as well. They're all done now. So let's bring this up to where, uh, about there, it needs to be. I've got the bearing in here now. Looks like it's going to go on without a hitch. So all my calculations were correct. I can breathe a sigh of relief now. I've learned over the years you take a bit of time in um, Working things out in your head, and you know, you measure up, measure three, four times before you actually make a cut or make a part, and invariably it turns out okay. So now I can tighten them up. Okay, so I can tick that part off now on the drawings, and of course the the test is being able to turn this by hand and the cross slide or not cross slide the saddle is actually traversing you know traversing down you can turn it by hand like this which means you've got everything right so well, I'm happy with that that's, that's I'm really happy so now I have um, spacers and uh, what have you to go in here now. Oh, uh, of course a, a um, thrust washer. Which looking at that I think I need to maybe pop the bearing in a little further to give me a bit of room. But that, that's fine, that's, it's looking good. Okay, I'm pretty well at final assembly now, so what I, I do in this case, because we've machined this um, cast iron out here, I've given this a liberal coating all around here. Um, in fact, I've put a little bit on the top of the slide here as well. Plenty on the gib. Uh, you'll have to adjust, and I, I use uh, bearing grease actually, like wheel bearing grease for a car. May not be considered to be the right material um, lubricant, but uh, I, I always use it and I never have a problem. Now you will get some squeeze out here, and quite a bit of squeeze out actually. But uh, anyway, the gibs in there, everything's in there. This is the sort of messy bit. Um, so now to adjust the gib up. So why not the, the, the adjust the screw back? And now you can do this sort of um, several times, you know, it's not just a one shot thing. What you've got to do is find the gib. There's a little detent in the gib. So we're taking the gib with us now. Right, so we're in the adjusting hole. And you can just feel, I, I mean I'm keeping the same pressure on. I don't know whether you can pick that up. And I'm doing that chord turn and it's locking it up on the gib, so I'm going to get a little tiny spanner now, I think. So it's a little fiddly, 
And of course, uh, over sort of a period of time, um, you know, the grease will come out slightly. Oh, that's, that's nice. Okay, that's perfect actually. So now I'm going to put these in. A lot of people say to use oil. You know, I suppose, you know, whatever your preference is. But I always use bearing grease and uh, then adjust the gibbs up after a period of time I'm going to be taking this back off again anyway because I've got to put the tur turret back in I could do that now but I wanted to make sure everything was working in here first So this is uh, the retainer for the turret, it just goes in there like that. Right, we're going to be running flood coolant on this, so um, and it's going to be rather high up, so the door's going to be closed. So I'll, I'll get you the best shot I can. Uh, we're also going to be doing a number of these. We're going to be doing two. Take that one out from there a moment. So I want to set this up so I can put the other one in and not have to worry about setting up for the second time. So I'm going to set it right on that edge there. This isn't a, you know, sort of a precision, well, it is sort of semi-precision, I suppose. But, um, no, it's okay. Now then. Let's jog the machine into place. <coughs> So I'm just do this by sighting it. Got about 35 there. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's going to go. All, this is going to come over this way a bit. That's pretty well there, but 34, 34. Okay, so I just jog the. 
tool into position and now I'm going to zero all three axes one two three so now they're all zeroed and now I always make a good practice is to regen the tool pass okay now raise the tool up off the pad we'll shut the door and start it off I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank my patrons for uh, financially supporting the channel. Uh, without their assistance, uh, this channel wouldn't exist uh, as it does today. And um, if any of you are interested in uh, becoming a patron, please pop along to my patron channel and I'd be very grateful. So. That's it for another video, I think. So if you go along to my channel, I have two channels now. And uh, some of the older videos on my main channel, I've put over to my second channel because quite frankly, it's just filling up. And uh, to give people a chance to uh, have a look without going through hundreds of videos, uh, you know, I've opened the second channel for you to have a look there. Um, and there are videos on this sort of stuff, CNC conversions, um, milling, uh, operating CNC milling machines, operating CNC rotor machines, uh, so I do woodwork and metalwork now with CNC's, also manual lays and mills, and my favourite, wood turning. So all I've got to say now is Thank you for joining me and it's bye for now. <laughs>